Free Foundation for the Art, and we're so excited. It's January 2021. Um, our first performance this year is going to be with Winsync. Uh, they've got an amazing performance. Uh, you're going to love it. It's got Apollo and the moon landing and um, Beethoven and <laughs> and one of my personal favorites, uh, Claire de Lune. So a little bit of really different things for everybody. It's going to be so, I think you're going to really love it. Um, Winsync is an amazing group. We've known them for years and uh, they're so innovative and young and exciting and they really put on some amazing work and I really encourage you to check them out, check their website out. Um, they've got some really, really fun programming going on. Um, we're excited. I hope you are. 2021's here and we're hoping that vaccine will roll out really fast and we can all be back together again soon. Looking forward to February. I know Rob wants to, Rob Lannis wants to perform, so y'all watch out for that one. Um, we plan to be back soon, um, as soon as it's safe for everybody. So we're hoping you're staying, staying safe and you've had a wonderful Christmas and New Year's and now we're all excited about the new year. So thank you for joining us. If you wanna make a donation, hit that donate button. Um, we are paying our artists. We wanna make sure that they get paid and um, um, it's been really hard on the artist community, the performing arts, the presenters, the road managers, the tech crew, everybody that has been in um, really shut down since March. So um, we want to keep that industry alive. So if you want to make a donation, we'd appreciate it. I know Winsync would appreciate it. Um, you'll have a great day. We'll see you soon. Have fun. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Good afternoon, patrons of Cypress Creek Face. My name is Garrett Hudson. I'm the flutist with Winsync. Although we're disappointed that we can't be with you in person this year, we're very much looking forward to sharing this program with you all virtually. We'll begin by sharing some arrangements and commissions inspired by the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, which we all celebrated back in 2019. Then we'll share some of our more recent commissions, including one that we've just premiered virtually. I'm going to turn it over to our oboist, Emily Tsai, to tell you a little bit about the first selection. In 1969, mankind took one giant leap forward when American astronauts took their first steps on the moon. 50 years later, we as a nation celebrated this momentous occasion. And for us as a Houston-based ensemble, where space exploration is huge, we jumped at the opportunity to commemorate the moon landing by commissioning a brand new piece of music. Chicago-based composer Mark Mellitz wrote us Apollo, and we also commissioned Robin Gould to create the visualizer you'll see that accompanies the music. We were able to partner with the Lunar and Planetary Institute to get actual NASA footage of the moon landing, which Robin was then able to incorporate into the visualizer. Apollo is made up of seven short movements. The first is Thea, which is the name of a goddess who is the mother of the moon. Thea was also the name of a celestial body that scientists think crashed into the earth, broke off a piece that then became the moon. The second movement is Sea of Tranquility, which is the location on the moon where the Apollo mission landed. The third movement is Buzz, which is of course named after the, one of the astronauts on the Apollo mission, Buzz Aldrin. Next is Luna Nova, which in Latin means new moon, which is of course a phase of the moon, but Mark told us that he was thinking more along the lines of the moon as a new frontier and what would happen now that mankind has stepped foot into this new environment. Following that is Debbie waltzing on the moon. Debbie was not an astronaut, but she was a childhood friend of Mark's who sadly passed away while he was writing Apollo. He told us that she loved to dance and so we are incredibly honored to dance with her on the moon every time we perform this piece. Next is one small step, taken from Neil Armstrong's famous quote, when he became the first person to set foot on the moon. The last movement is Moonwalk, which with its funky groove can definitely be taken as a reference to Michael Jackson's famous dance move. And it, I think it also depicts those first astronauts bouncing up and down on the low gravity surface of the moon. We hope you enjoy Apollo. Thank you. 
With its repeating bass line and subtle unfolding, Dietrich Buxtehude's Passacaglia in D minor is a great musical meditation for us. Like many musicians in 17th century Europe, Buxtehude's main employment was as a church musician, and he practiced a spirituality that was influenced by numerology and the cosmos. Originally for organ, this Passacaglia is broken up into four different sections, each with its own key. Historians believe that the four sections are inspired by the four phases of the moon, which were depicted on a clock at the back of the church where Buxtehude worked.
So we've traveled through space and now let's travel through time to the early 19th century and the origins of the wind quintet. This next performance is special to us for two big reasons. First, because it comes from the last concert that we performed before the pandemic lockdown began, which we presented at Midtown Arts and Theater Center Houston on February 29th, 2020. But also learning this music offered us a window into the wonderful Writing for Winds by Ludwig von Beethoven during his 250th anniversary year. This is the finale of his Opus 103 Wind Octet, which was composed during a time when chamber music for winds was really coming into its own as a genre and foreshadows a lot of that great writing to come in the symphonies. Of course, to make an octet work for a quintet, we must play an arrangement, and this one comes from Israeli bassoonist Mordecai Rechtman. <laughs> Thank you. 
lives as touring chamber musicians changed significantly in 2020, but challenged us to be even more creative about how to perform and present concerts. The next piece, Hold Sacred, premiered less than one month ago and was created with our new remote recording techniques and a small team of engineers for both audio and video. We have never been in the same room as our composer, Akshaya Avril Tucker, or in the same room with each other for a performance. However, our virtual version of Hold Sacred features all five of us and Akshaya together. Cast in a beautiful combination of silhouettes and shadows, Wind Sync performs while Akshaya, trained in traditional Indian dance, Odissi, dances to the score. Please enjoy. We'd like to close our set with a movement from one of our favorite new pieces, Ivan Trevino's Songbook Volume 3. Ivan wrote these pieces as musical thank yous to artists who inspired him, and we have in turn been inspired by him. 
we have gone on to include Songbook in our rotation of touring programs featuring Ivan as both composer and percussionist. Tonight we will share with you Burn, capturing the high energy and spirit of wincing performances. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to our virtual concert as part of the Promenade series. We actually want to share one more Moon-inspired piece as sort of an encore to this program, Debussy's famous piano solo, Claire de Lune, which I arranged for Wind Quintet. This piece is especially meaningful to me as both my mother and my sister play piano, and they absolutely loved playing this piece. We hope you enjoy the music and are crossing our fingers that we will be able to see you in person soon.